And it's that whole analogy we've all heard a million times with the cabin pressure dropping in the airplane and the oxygen mass falls. And people hear that and they're like, yeah, 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 of course, put it on first and then you can help the others. But people don't realize when that's, when that's really happening, like if you don't do that, you die. <laughs> like you, you die. And it is easy to say in theory, like, yeah, of course you put your oxygen mask on first, but when it's in real life, it's not that easy. It's not that black and white. Um, but it's not until you take care of yourself, and in that case, being your happiness, that you have the capacity to, to take care of anyone else. And so if you think about it in our own lives, we have to figure out what's blocking our capacity. Because we all have capacity, mental capacity. We all have, you call it capacity, but you might as well call it potential. And the reality is the majority of the world, the majority of us are operating at 30, 40% of our capacity. And so why is that? Uh, it's all these things that we're allowing into our life to distract us, to, uh, it's the, these things that we continue to let cause that chaos that we talked about. So we allow all these things to just steal from us. And those things could be valuable things like helping other people. Helping other people is great unless it's stealing from you. And sometimes you have to be selfish to be selfless, which is a very complex thing to wrap your head around in the beginning, but then when you start living it out, you're like, oh, I get it. I can't pour from an empty glass. You can't pour from an empty glass. And you may be able to help other people a little bit, for a period of time, it's just not sustainable. Like, like long term, like you, it, that's what leads to burnout. It's what leads to frustration, and it's it what it's what leads to depression because you're worried about everybody else but yourself. And when you yeah. put yourself last, it it never works out. Uh, yeah. So you you just have to you have to be so conscious of it. Um, and and just like you're saying, guarding your time. You have to guard your time fiercely. And, and I look at it even more like further into it as like guarding your capacity. So if, if you think of every human being having a capacity, like let's say full capacity is 100%. But the reality is, you know, when you're doing this for your mom and every time you talk to your, you know, your sister, she's complaining about this. Every time you're, you know, with this person, they're, you know, super negative when you're doing this these things are all just like pulling and robbing and stealing capacity away from you. So at the end of your day, when it's time to focus on you, you could be operating at 30 or 40% capacity. And how can I really help, you know, a friend of mine going through a difficult time when I've got nothing to pull from. <laughs> and so when you start thinking about it as capacity, I started guarding the capacity. And we talk about you know, fleeing from negativity. And when you start thinking about your capacity as, you know, okay, you've got 100% and these things that are stealing from it, you start thinking that like, like overly serious. I uh, just avoid it at all costs. I don't like talking about negative things. I don't like hearing negative things. I don't like when people are talking about stuff that's negative. I will literally walk away because you're allowing other people to, to steal that from you and not focusing on yourself first. And obviously you wanna be performing at the highest possible capacity at all times. So the only way to do that is to make sure that you're building up your capacity first. And then once you're good, then you can help others. 